Hey there YouTube, what is going on? I hope you're having a great day. And today I wanted to review an app called Pixelmator. So without ado, let's go ahead and get right to it. Now Pixelmator is an app that just recently came out to iPhone and it's been on the iPad since November, October when they debuted alongside the iPad Air 2. So if you've been using Pixelmator for iPad, you should be able to be looking at a familiar app. Now when you open it, you'll see for the first time, if you're a first time buyer, you'll see a welcome screen, tap the continue, and then you're done with that welcome screen. Now, and this is your home screen area right here, and essentially it's to where you'll be opening to every single time that you open, open the app, unless you were already working on an app before. Now to be able to edit a photo, you click the plus sign, and then you have four options, create an image, uh, iCloud Drive, photos, and take photos, but most likely if you already are wanting to edit a photo then you already have a photo ready to take but if you want to take a photo you can do it go ahead and do that right within the app anyway I already have a photo that I wanted to edit and so um, a couple weeks ago I saw this kid in a tree quite honestly don't know who it, he is and he was not K-I-S-S-I-N-G anyway um, so yeah let's go ahead and edit this image now one thing that you will notice is that of course the design is quite similar to iPad version and also, um, Pixelmator for iPhone and iPad and Mac, really, um, unlike in Lite, a Pixelmator is definitely a more advanced tool for editors just because it doesn't have as much intuitiveness as in Lite does. Now, if you haven't seen my Lite review, you might want to go check that out. Um, anyway, so the, your main little editing tools right here are adjust colors and add effects. And you also have your paint and erase, retouch, and distort. Um, so the most of your editing features are going to happen in adjust colors and add effects. Now adjusting colors lets you adjust the colors. You have eight little presets here, but the majority of the customization of your photo editing is all up to you. So you have all your options on the side, on the bottom really, and you can adjust the colors, the brightness, contrast, saturation here and then you can also um, change the temperatures and the tints and if the white balance is a little off usually your camera does this automatically for you but if you want to change the white balance you can type that little eye drop thing and move it around of course the white balance is already white balanced so it'll just change the colors too much to look unnatural and then lastly you have your curves which is kind of expected in a high-end photo editor and you have two points and but that can become three or four or five if I can get them to tap there we go yeah so after that then we also have your usual effects that you can add and you can blur and sharpen and some of them have little dial tools these are definitely um, prevalent throughout the operating system of Pixelmator and you have your vignette you have let's see if I can zoom in for you there you go you have your sharpen your vignette your noise human saturation vintage black and white and some of these black and whites are all presets here for you. Of course, you can always change the saturation uh, later um, to be able to customize your black and white amount, but there's your presets for you. Now, two things that I don't really see too much of in photo editors is the light leaks. And there are plenty of options that you have here. Um, let me zoom back out. I'm sorry. There we go. And to be able to rotate it, you can just, it's easy, one as like that, to be able to rotate the sun. And then one other thing that is sort of hidden is that if you um, hold long press, then you get a little menu here for the strength and coloring of that light leak. Pretty cool. And then the same thing for the bokeh. You have all these presets, little options right here. And if you don't like those presets, you can easily just... Um, hold that and voila you have the ability to change the color of your little dots and of course like the light you can spin it around that and expand quite simple and then my favorite though is, I think is really cool is the kaleidoscope and this is right back from the iPad app it's the iPad version anyway you have your kaleidoscope and you can move it around and it's super cool and then of course you can change the number of sides that are on um, the thing, the, the image, and it's cool to be able to just go, wee. that's, and I could probably do this all day with a bunch of different photos and have the same cool effects, anyway, 
So yeah, there's the, your basic effects there. Now, one thing that's super cool about Pixelmator is that it is based off of a layering system. So essentially what that means is that, let's say, when you add a photo, yeah, anyway, you can move around your images here. You can, um, de oops. One thing that there's a different, uh, that it's sort of challenge with is when the app needs to figure out if you're wanting to rotate it or trying to make it smaller. So uh, that's one of the struggles that I've sometimes had, but you can always rotate it and, uh, de and you can shrink it. I found it's easiest to shrink it like that and then move it around. Now, what the layering system does is that essentially now that I have a second photo in, it realizes that there's a second photo in. And so now, because I have that photo selected, any single edit that I make to there will only go to that image that's there. So if you want to get to the other image, you actually have to pull out the sidebar. And then, so now see it's selected on that one. Now to be able to edit the one there, I click there. That's, and that will be the same thing with the text or any other image that you add in. You have to slide out that little bar. Now, if you want to blend an image in, this is sort of hidden. You have to long press on it, or d double tap to do the style. So there's the style, you click on it after you've um, double tapped on that image, and now you should see an option for blending right there. And so there's tons of different ways to blend it, and it is really nice. You just have to figure out which mode of blending works best for you. Okay, so yeah. And one other thing that I might suggest is that if you want that ruler that is nicely there along the edge, that is actually one of the settings that you have there. So you click there on that little wheel, sorry, you click guides, and then the ruler is right there in case you want it. This is meant to be a graphic design app, so it, that is why you have that ruler option there. Now, one of the other cool things about Pixelmator for iPhone, now that it is on the iPhone, is that now that it's a universal app, so essentially what that means is that it works on iPad and iPhone, and if you have a Mac, it works on your Mac just as well, and essentially if you have an iPad or Mac um, for Pixelmator, you can be able to use Handoff. So essentially what that means is that um, handoff capabilities are in the iPad and iOS version and Mac. So as you can see there, there's that little thing, uh, image. Oh, come on. When you click it, focus, there we go. And then you can easily swipe up and voila, or open automatically up to the Pixelmator app, which is super handy. And it's most of the time it does work, but sometimes you've got to get it to be able to work better. <laughs> work better, I mean, just have it hopefully work. Anyway, um, that is your handoff capabilities, and if you have a Mac, um, Pixelmator will be able to do the same thing where you can click and do that. Now, let's go ahead and talk about painting, well not painting, racing, but retouch and distort, which are probably two of my favorite little um, effects that you can do that I have not seen yet in, in another app. So essentially what you can do is there's, you have plenty of these effects here. And so you have um, repair, lighten, darken, clone, sharpen, soften, fix, red eye, saturate, and desaturate. So essentially, my favorite tools are the repair tool and the clone tool, which the clone tool just came out to iOS, um, and it's super cool. And so essentially, the repair tool, let's say that I don't want part of an image there, essentially repair will take out anything that you don't want. And there's now a new counter tool right there for to be able to tell you how far in it is. Now, I've seen that any repair tool that, um, used, it come, when it's used, it comes out a little awkward unless you have a pure, like, one color background, or essentially it kind of looks a little weird um, and not natural looking. But also my favorite tool is the clone tool, which essentially is a clone, and it copies whatever you have. And what I, I think is really interesting is that there's just this tiny little circle right here, and it figures out exactly what you want to be able to clone. So you move, just move it to that area, and then you just start painting like so. And it is super nice. And of course, I'm not going to be posting that because that's just stupid looking. But I just wanted to be able to show off that cool little feature. Yeah. And then um, if you ever want to, you can wrong press on the undo. And then you can actually also redo as well. So yeah, that's super handy. I'm not going to undo that. Alrighty.
Now we're also getting onto the really fun stuff that just came out and to iOS, and that is the distort tool. And the distort tool lets you have a lot of fun with the image, and it takes advantage of iOS's new um, metal capabilities. And essentially, metal is software that was released with iOS 8 um, last year, and it's traditionally used for gaming, but it can also be used for photo editing as Pixelmator team figured out. And so distort tools, you can, um, your options right here, you can warp it, you can bump, pinch, twirl left and right, and then if you don't like what it, the outcome is, then you can always restore it. And of course, you to be able to notice a big effect, you have to have the size and strength to be very large or else you'll be like well this does not seem to be working when you have the size super small and you have the strength at zero percent so you won't see anything there and so let's go ahead and bump it back up and then you'll see the size right there um so yeah let's just go ahead and bump so yeah that's super fun to be able to just mess around with an image and like if someone's arms are in the way you can see that you can bump uh, and make someone's arms look fat. It's kind of funny. So yeah, those are those tools. And then lastly, if you want an area to be affected by a tool, um, and it's very important, um, and you want like duo effects, you can select an area. And you by default have a rectangular area, but you can also select between a free hand-drawn area or a circular area, or you can just paint it, doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, that is the select tool, and yeah, so if you want to delete, deselect it, deselecting is right there, you click there, and then voila, it is that area is deselected. Let me go ahead and go back to that main layer there, um, and yeah, and then if you want to crop out or crop it out, you can easily just crop it out, and that is pretty much about it that Pixelmator does that is review so yeah the pixelmator is a fantastic app and i would highly recommend picking it up and along with inlight pixelmator is a fantastic photo editing app that i highly recommend you getting thank you all so much for watching and i will see you all in the next one bye